Um. <laughs> well, we're live. All Hello, right. everyone. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Can you guys hear us and see us? Yes, that is that is a valid question. I think we should. Can uh, somebody give us a radio check? Radio check. Uh, oh, maybe we are a few seconds delayed. I um, don't know. We are uh, trying this new uh, way of streaming, which is called StreamYard. Hence the little duck on the top right corner of the of the screen. Uh, this is uh, this is the free version of the software. It's because I I didn't want to pay immediately. <laughs> I just wanted to try how it was. Apparently, you can highlight people's question uh, on the screen. So, for example, da da da, saying hi. There we go. Look at that. And now, hi, Silas. Silas says <laughs> hi to whoever is out there. That's pretty cool. Uh, so yes, but I we'll see how it works. And if it works well, maybe I will pay the two hundred dollars a year that it costs to use this service. I think you can service. actually have other people like call in and we can have them on, yeah? That's right, you can have people call in. Uh, well, anyways, welcome on board Policio, where today is a little bit chaotic. Who wants to, <laughs> who wants to explain the chaos while I open this can of Diet Coke? What, so, what Not that? everybody at once. I, I don't think there was chaos. <laughs> By the way, meet Annette. Annette is our crew. Annette, uh, Annette, Hi, Annette, YouTube, YouTube, Annette. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, Annette is our crew. She will be with us for the coming months, uh, going all the way, hopefully all the way, from Bonaire to the Azores. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we hope that you will stay with us. <laughs> Certainly the plan until we arrive in Horta. Uh, so yeah, today is day three to departure. Yeah. We are hoping to depart either on Friday or Saturday, and I think that the weather looks good. Ryan, you can uh, tell us a little more about the weather in a few. And I have to apologize from the beginning. I am so tired right now. Yeah, I think that is the I'm case. I'm just, we're all destroyed. So. <laughs> I think that it's everybody so, on board. I, just before this, I said to Sophie, I might fall asleep during this, but Ryan, I'll try. Scoot over a little bit, get uh, into, get I'll, into try, I'll try not to. Um, weather, uh, yeah, I weather is looking pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, <laughs> for this. Um, yes, nice. Sunshine update. and wind. Good. All right, you can go back to. <laughs> no, so today was provisioning day on board Policeal, meaning that we spent about three hours at the supermarket, uh, filling four carts <laughs> in yeah. total, spending about eight hundred dollars, um, and <laughs> half an hour ago. The boat was like a huge mess of all those bags and the food that is literally everywhere right now. And we're like, oh, in half an hour, we're live on YouTube. Yay. <laughs> that is good. That is good timing. I was off buying flashlights. Mm. But Ryan was not nice. even on the boat. So uh, They're big. We, uh, <laughs> Security style. I have a feeling this life is oh, going God. to be... <laughs> I have a feeling this life is going to be a little bit chaotic. Kids, like, try to stay... Try to try to behave. Okay. He, I was just suggested Red Bull from, from Chuck. Yeah, Ryan I'm probably. I'm not a big Red Bull fan, but maybe. But you would you would probably need sometimes that. you need. Sometimes. sometimes. Okay. So uh, point is, today is a little bit chaotic, but we wanted to uh, take the time to say hi and talk a little bit about our upcoming passage before we leave. Um, the coming days are probably going to be at least as chaotic as this one. Yeah, that's just how it is. So uh, we're happy we could just take the. It actually feels good to sit and do nothing for yes. uh, five minutes. Thank you guys for giving us this uh, opportunity. Uh, as you can see, we are at the marina. We uh, moved Policeal from the mooring buoy this morning so that it would be more convenient for us to uh, run errands, go to the store. Uh, throw away the things that we need to throw away and bring on board all the food. And I think that it was the right call. Yep. So here we are. And uh, Silas asks, let's see if I can do this. Yes, you can. What's, What's the boat, in, boat background? in the background? Yay. Oh, it's actually, it's actually a pretty cool boat. It's a, one of our favorite boats. It's a 70 foot catamaran with a very interesting rig. Actually it has two masts on it, no head sails. It's, I don't even know what kind of rig you call it, but it's a cool boat and apparently is extremely fast. So it's, what's it say? 
What? Safira. Safira is the name. Safira, Safira is the name of this uh, big seventy-foot catamaran that is behind us. Uh, behind us, oh, where is where did the uh, where did Stellar J go? Oh, they're stuck. Um, what happened? Their bow thruster overheated. <laughs> so they're, really? Oh, they're not so moving for a while. We have another couple of friends on the boat that is uh, literally two hour left, right in front of our boat. Um, he's Canadian. His name is Dave with his wife, Jackie. Uh, we met them here. And Dave really wanted to come and crash our little live. What did he want to wear again? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I see that he's moving dark, so we're probably not going to see Dave. Dave, if you see this, we're missing you. Where are you? Uh, okay, Stephen asks, remind us where you are now or where you are going to go and how long it will take. So we are currently in Bonaire. Uh, Bonaire is in the ABC Islands. Is, it's the island that is the further east of the ABC Islands. And we will go to the Azores, hopefully in one go. Uh, Ryan, why, like, what kind of route are we going to take and why are we taking that route? Well, we're going to know more about that tomorrow. We've employed the services of a router and some shore support. So we're actually going to have a little bit uh, more to come on that. But we will probably head straight north out of here and head more towards Bermuda. We may even up in, we may even up, end up in Bermuda um, and stop there after about 10 days. But we'll head at least quite a ways north towards Bermuda and if the winds and the weather are looking good we'll then turn east towards the Azores and that really looks like the best weather for us at least right now so it's a long passage and you know you can only forecast about a week out so but the week ahead is looking pretty good 15 knot winds up to 20 pretty good seas so yeah yeah thank you so much digital photonet for the super chat and Will we sail to Bermuda or directly to the Azores? I think that we pretty much just answered, answered that, that question. Yeah. yeah. So we uh, we will we would prefer not to stop to the uh, to Bermuda. It is absolutely our contingency plan. We know that uh, during the first week of our passage, uh, first week to ten days, we're going to need to make a decision if we need to stop or not. I think they will only stop in Bermuda if we need to refuel or if we have any type of problem that we need to stop and fix. Uh, otherwise, coming into Bermuda would be, I think, if we could avoid doing that, it would just make the trip a yeah, little bit shorter. Yeah, we just keep going, yeah. Um, you know, once you're in the offshore rhythm, it's really hard to break away and then start again. Um, so our hope is certainly to make it to the Azores in one go. All right. Question, what are the extras on Polar Steel that Polar Steel has to do safe passage? Uh, I assume- Flashlights. <laughs> really good it's true. Ones. Okay. Sorry for the silliness on board today. We are all a little bit tired. <laughs> um, I think that the first thing that we wanted to install versus our last Atlantic crossing is a big alternator. Do you want to talk about why? Yeah, like on the last passage, we really spent a lot of time powering up the batteries uh, when we had cloudy days. We just weren't filling them up and the autopilot was working really hard. So we upgraded the alternator from an 80 amp alternator to a 180 amp alternator and it's really efficient. So we actually see about 120, 130 amps out of it. So that's going to, I think, allow us to top up the batteries when we need to really quick, which will save us fuel, which we might need to motor anyways through the columns. So yeah, that's uh, that's probably the biggest thing we yep. did. We're not going to use the washing machine underway. I don't think it will work. Um, yeah, today we're doing a weight and balance exercise. The boat is heavy. Yeah, you can you can probably see that <laughs> that we're very bottom we're heavy. Bottom heavy and if you look heavy. if you look at us and uh, this like pontoon, the like the water level behind, it's like whoop. We're very we're like, heavy. Whoop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, we're working on it. We're trying to um, like put a whole bunch of weight at the front of the boat and uh, on uh, the starboard side of the boat to uh, try to find a good balance. So uh, let's let's uh, throw some questions here to our guest. Um, where did my where did this go? Annette, why don't you tell us your background? Are you a sailor? 
I, do you do passages? Do you know what a sailboat is? It's so funny. A couple of years ago, I would have never thought that that is what, how I would be introducing myself. I am a sailor. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I live on a boat myself on a 37 foot catamaran in Rhode Island. That is our usual station. We traveled to the Caribbean last year and here. The longest passage I've done uh, to date was 1,500 miles from Virginia to the BVI's, and that took us 11 days and seven hours to be exact. <laughs> um, that was definitely an experience, and, and this was the next big challenge, and I couldn't think of better people to do it with, so this kind of just hopefully, happened very luckily. <laughs> hopefully, by the time you arrive, you still think the same yes. thing. Yes. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, you know, you won't regret your decision either. So it goes both ways, but I'm very excited to be here. So how does it feel that you are going to be at sea for between 20 and 30 days? Possibly. Possibly. Pretty good. I'm yeah. excited to get away for a little bit. Yeah, it should be good. I, I'm hoping for, you know, good company and good, good weather. Ho hopefully we're good company. Hopefully. Right. Annette will reveal the truth about <laughs> when we arrive what it is what it's like to uh, sail with us uh, on the other side of this passage yeah what's the thing you're most looking forward to annette of about this passage this passage yeah the i think the entire experience of it if you can say that or like um, the sailing with the polar seal crew <laughs> <laughs> Lots of laughs for sure. I think we can. I think we'll do well with entertaining each other. I think so too. I think we'll do well. And what is the thing? And that... dance parties? Could that be one thing? Maybe. Oh, absolutely. Have I we mean, not shown you weather permitting? Have you not? Have we not shown you the disco ball yet? We have not introduced. I've you only to seen it. I've only She's seen been it on through the FaceTime. Less right. than twenty-four hours. Uh, what is the thing that you're most nervous or concerned about? Uh, yeah, if I'm gonna get seasick for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like my stomach <laughs> settled, right. Does and my have, settled nerves. Do you have like a tendency to get seasick? Um, in bumpy weather. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's possible. It's mm -hmm. also most most possible towards the beginning, of course. Yeah. Um, but once we get settled, I should be fine, unless it gets really bumpy. But then again. My sailing experience is on a catamaran, so it's very different. Um, it is. Yeah, the, the, motion, the motion's will... going to be a lot yeah. different. Yeah. Interesting. Those are good questions. Mm. Thanks, Ryan. If you guys have any question for Annette, please leave them in the chat, and we will answer them live. And uh, and we will put them on the screen. I actually kind of like this That's little cool. feature of having the Here's the a question from Barry. Yeah, I like this. This is cool. And it'd be cool because we can invite people on okay, later. Okay, maybe, good, maybe good at the end of this live, I will pay the $200 so that <laughs> we get rid of the little duck. That's uh, the duck's kind of cool. It's duck, almost it's yeah, almost it's, like, it's almost where my Hawkeye is. Yeah. All right, do you guys keep changing the clocks everywhere you go? We do, even on the passage. So. Yep. Every, uh, every, well, not going north, we won't change the clocks, but once we start going east, we'll start changing them every few days. Uh, we don't know if we'll do a rotating watch or a fixed schedule watch, but if we do fix, it's nice to change the clocks then because you, you, things move as well. But we haven't quite decided the watch, uh, watch schedule, so... Well, uh, I think that we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We're going to let it happen organically. Okay, uh, Annette, this is a question for you. Annette, do you fish? I personally do not fish. <laughs> <laughs> but the I will. Is, the question is, what is fishing? Like, yeah, is let's the act of throwing it. a line in the water, which is what Sophie because does, Because if, if we throw in the, yeah, the line with the... the or you know, d is it from is it start... Called? Is it start to finish, like yeah. from the kill and the gutting? Because Sophie doesn't do that. No, I don't do that. Oh no, no. I choose, not. I choose the lure, but then I cook. I cook the fish. I'm usually the one that hands the how do you call the thing that stabs them when you, you know, oh, the, the, the hook. hook. Yeah, you got a big one. I'm I'm pretty good at that. We got a new beater. <laughs> we got a new because I used to use my wrench to knock them out, oh, but now I've got a bat with a lead weight in it. It's really oh, bad. Let's not awesome. talk. Let's not talk about it. But like, there we need to kill the fish in a human way anyways so uh, meet annette assistant fisher <laughs> yes that's that's yeah. is she gonna kill him no so it's just me yes, yes. okay <laughs> just to be clear all right here's one sophie larry summer says he'll send you 20 bucks if you put on those seats oh glasses. larry that's that's all you needed to ask you, i'm coming back <laughs> I, and by the way i don't need the 20 dollars you don't need the 20 bucks but 
Uh, okay. What speed? Let's see here. We'll come back to you, Larry. Uh, Paul, what speed will you average? I really like this. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a cool. Uh, uh, Paul, what speed will you average to the Azores? I have no idea. For, we're really heavy right now. I usually plan five knots. Uh, it looks like going up at least to Bermuda, the forecast now, the wind's going to be on our beam almost the whole way. So we'll probably be going pretty quick ish if the waves aren't nailing us. So maybe we get up there a little. The, this boat can go, we've had it like we can average six or seven knots with the boat. It can go really fast and the bottom's really clean right now. But uh, we are super, super heavy. So I'm planning, I just planned five knots, 10 days to Bermuda. And between. 14 and 17 days, I think, the Azores from there. So that gives you an idea. Now Sophie's back and- Annette, have we never told you about the seasick analysis? We're gonna go back to Larry's. No. Okay. okay. I'm not aware. So- <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Do you understand the concept? No. It's supposed no. to keep you level, like the water is the horizon on the inside. So does it work? Supposed... No. no. God, no. <laughs> I mean, no, okay, wait, 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 wait. No, but like, you know, this was a, like a startup company uh -huh. uh, but apparently those are not the real ones because uh larry you didn't, <laughs> you didn't have need to, to do, do that, that larry uh we all have a good uh, seasickness glasses <laughs> moment don't we uh, but we uh, to be fair try to, that. God. sophie they don't work for sophie but i will say uh sophie bought those glasses herself and the company actually reached out to us after we did a video about yeah. it and they did say that they have never made a glass with a red with fluid. the red so so it those could are be a knockoff those We're are not probably sure. not the right they're <laughs> probably not the right deal and i should procure myself the right one the blue the, ones the only problem yeah. is that ever since yeah. i got those uh those glasses i'm really not seasick anymore i don't uh i don't hey. hello. hello what's up <laughs> oh nice well we're live on youtube so uh so uh, so there you go if you come here in the like there hi. say hi <laughs> we're uh, 360 people in there <laughs> Yang. Okay, we'll see you later see ya. cheers <laughs> right aren't they super cool they're amazing i love them all right okay uh, <clears throat> let's go back to uh seri being serious cruising here. diana why okay i guess you're gonna leave this uh how long will we stay in the azores i think we'll stay about three months maybe two or three months yeah that's about the summer we'll stay enjoy the nice weather uh and then we'll move down to Madeira and the canaries and then probably around christmas time or maybe before we'll start heading yes gosh, this is really do hard. another do another christmas on the boat um yeah that's what we're thinking that's the plan. I'm really excited to go to Madeira. I was really sad that we didn't manage to get there the first time that we crossed. Uh, so that will definitely be a highlight of uh, the summer and fall, going to Madeira. I'm excited. Okay. Ryan, what are you doing? I'm just looking. I'm okay, like, oh, I... I have to click one. Okay. I've taken over control. No. What? Oh, what is Annette's superpower? What is Annette? your superpower, Annette? Uh, I can already take on the couple. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, Annette. Uh, when we were at the store today, it helped me grab the the stuff that was really high on the shelves so today. Oh, that to. is actually one of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Annette, I don't think you so. are way <laughs> taller than I thought okay. you were going to be. Okay, yeah, but it's, it's it's good. I'm not. It's it's a good okay. thing. Okay, so uh, Annette is still like a model, which you wouldn't see, I think, right now. But like Annette has like you're basically a model it's a good superpower to be able to reach things that are higher up on yeah. the shelf that's definitely a good one yeah um uh and then we, what's it what do you think your superpower is in it <laughs> i can i can throw good dance parties that's good i will come in handy i think it'll be very I think important it, i think i i can also tell early when we need to be brief <laughs> oh you can say you can say when we need to reef, reef <laughs> early yeah that's that is uh, I think we share that one. Okay. <laughs> Reef. Okay. Who is she? Oh yeah. Let's uh, let's tell. Let's take this one. Uh, is Annette someone's sister? You know, Annette. When I looked at photos of you, I was like, Annette and I actually look kind of similar. You could probably get away with that. Uh, which is yeah. Pretty fun. And we, what's the fun thing about that we figured out last week? Oh, we share a birthday. Annette and I were born on the same day, except uh, five years apart. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the uh, I'm the old part. 
So yeah, Annette, Annette is, uh, this is the first time we've met Annette, but we've been friends with her and her husband, Willem, for uh, over a year, a year uh, now. It's like something like a year. Met on Skype. They have a company called Catamaran Supply. If you, if you have followed our videos lately, you have definitely heard of Catamaran Supply. Uh, so. They have this uh, super cool online chandlery uh, where they sell, among other, our dinghy, which is a take cat, and our outboard, which is a torpedo. They have a really cool plastic-free shop. Uh, where you can buy a whole bunch of um, like day-to-day -day products that uh, are environmentally friendly and make life easier on board. Uh, what else did you but get? More, more but most of all, most of all, we became such good friends. Yes, yes, was, yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So lately, we've been just randomly calling each other. We yeah. helped us each other out on a bunch of boat questions, and it's been really fun getting to know Ryan and Sophie. And so when you know, a couple, what was it, maybe a month or two ago? Yeah, it was a couple of months that we, ago. That we talked about this, that you will probably be doing it. Yeah. Um, it came up in conversation and I thought this could be something cool to do yeah. with you. And um, also, also almost like an opportunity that you can't let pass because I think for a long passage like this, I wouldn't do it really with anyone, um, just anyone out there. So this for was, for this was cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's a good segue. This is, yeah, why do we invite people to join us? That is a very good question. So the first time that Ryan and I crossed the Atlantic, we did it just the two of us, and it was fine. I think that uh, we enjoyed it. It was very challenging, definitely not a lot of sleep. And when something goes wrong, uh, you really left just the two of you fixing the, um, the situation. And I think that we have no regrets about the decision that we made, but uh, I value sleep. <laughs> and so uh, it is actually nice to have somebody else on board um, to help you to take night watches and uh, and makes you feel a little bit safer. Now, taking crew is uh, it is a lot of work. It's uh, worth it, uh, but sometimes it doesn't always work out the way that uh, you want things to work. And so Ryan and I are very selective with who we take. And uh, when you showed interest in joining us for that passage, we were like, oh, but that's a no-brainer. And it would be amazing. Um, so yeah, we take crew because we believe that they will be helpful to the passage. Uh, they will come with a, a good attitude and we'll be able to get a little more sleep and also we'll have a lot of fun together because having somebody else on board really changes the dynamic. Uh, most of the time for the better. I think that it's really fun to share the experience with somebody else. I think um, your point is that we don't really select crew based on sailing if, abilities. It's more like compatibility. Yes. So that's more important to us than sailing abilities. Yes. Compatibility. Okay. Exactly. Kind of a double whammy. Uh, this to Marco from the Azores. Oh, hi, we, Marco. So we have oh. never been to uh the azores uh, and then another question before this was are we planning to stay in horta we are planning to land in horta hopefully see horta and then move on to some of the other islands uh and what are we most curious to see just we never know what sometimes we get to places and we never even know what it's going to be what like it's gonna so look. we're just excited, excited to, to see, see the, the vegetation and just like yeah. the mountainous yes meet people and uh find the little gems that most yeah. people don't know about that's i think for us so one thing that i'm really excited about is the food because uh portugal has some of the most amazing food the best produce uh wine and uh, and meats i love portuguese food and that is something that I'm particularly excited to reconnect with. Uh, we really enjoyed our stay in Portugal, and uh, ah, it was such a highlight. Never You've never been to Portugal? No. Oh yeah, it will be your first. Oh, talking about that, guys. Oh, we need we need to tell you a little bit of a story about the flag. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna uh, remind you us. You can't tell that now. Yes, you have to say true. that. What? You, the flag. You have to say that. Oh, yes. uh, really? Yes. Well, look at Ryan crying, like drawing the line. I was. It's usually listen, the other way around. No? In, the, in the last <laughs> live, I was given the line. So. Okay, guys. That's, I know. I yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to hear the story of the flag? No. Oh. No. <laughs> what? There's a line. We you can't. Didn't... We can't say. Just tell the story of the flag. You wouldn't let me talk about my new project last time. Okay, fine. I will not <laughs> tell the story of the flag. I'm thinking you need to save it because it's going to make for a better. Okay. Fine. Arrival. Fine. Okay. 
Uh, let's see here. This one. This one? This one? Yeah. What's this? With your new electric setup, but this kind of gives away what we were just talking about. With your new electric setup, how much? How many hours do you think you'll need to have your engine running to keep your battery happy? It really oh, depends. Oh, I see what we the question about is. This with the alternator, yeah. yes. Uh, it hmm. really depends on uh, how much sun, sun we're getting yeah. that day. So if we get a good amount of sun during the day, we don't need to run the engine to um, top up the batteries. But the last time we crossed, we had clouds the entire week, uh, and the autopilot was draining a lot of power, and it was difficult for us to stay on top of our energy needs with, uh, with the engine. And so this time, it's really going to depend on the sun that we have, how much the autopilot needs to work, and um, um, yeah. That's uh, that's about it. So um, I don't know. Maybe we run the engine one hour every other day. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Sophie, do you guys have a cocktail shaker that doesn't leak? Uh, yeah. Do we okay. Story? So there is a story behind there is there is a backstory uh, here, Ryan. Like this is where you need to go because if you use this touchpad, you move oh, all the screen oh, checks. We have friends here in Bonaire, uh, they're on the mooring field. They have a YouTube sailing channel called Sailing Too Short. Hi guys. <laughs> and last week, Crystal invited us for Sundowners, which is a segment on their YouTube channel. like, oh yeah, we have this segment on our channel where we make a cocktail and it's fun. And I'm like, yeah, cocktail, great. Except that I've never made a cocktail in my life before. And when she was like, okay, you need to shake and then you need to make a dance. I was like, oh yeah, that sounds good. Like just like my skill. So I start like shaking and dancing, uh, but I forgot to put my finger on the top cap. I didn't even know that there was a top cap on that bottle. And uh, I ended up shaking the thing All on over. me, um, which was recorded on in slow motion. And uh, that video is available on our friend's YouTube channel. Worth What's the channel? <laughs> Sailing Too Short. Sailing Too Short, you can check that out. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so no, I don't have a cocktail shaker, sorry. Absolutely right, Tom. Go Hawkeyes. Ryan, I think that I need to take the, back the control of, no. uh, of I'm in charge. what's going on, going on on the screen. Mm. All right. Okay. Ty, how long will the shifts be with three people? We haven't really decided. We're thinking either three hours or four hours. Um, it really depends. When you're really far offshore, you can generally get away with longer watches when, uh, you know, at the end of your watch in the last hour, you kind of catnap and you wake up every 10 minutes and just look around because there is literally nothing around that you can hit. Um, so we'll see. It can also be that we start with three and then we transition to a little longer watches. We haven't really decided. Uh, we tend to be fairly flexible with that as long as everybody's happy, everybody feels rested. That's the most important. So um, we really haven't decided. But uh, you will know when uh, we film these events and they come out in YouTube videos on the other side. All right, question for Annette. So someone said, George said Annette's voice is amazing. George did say that. Uh, let's, uh, let's show that up. Yes. That's great. Thank you, George. Scott asks, Annette, it must be completely bizarre knowing you're about to spend three to four weeks in a small, very small environment with two people who already have existing passageway relationship. Hmm. How do you feel about that? Hmm. I feel like I'm uh, here to help. So I'm just hoping that, you know, I can be helpful and that that will just okay. be an addition rather than um, disturbing, you know, an yeah. existing routine. We're, I think, I mean, at least our philosophy, I hope that it will translate into facts and uh, practice, but uh, we, uh, we really try to work as a team and uh, really integrate the people who come sail with us. Uh, they have as much responsibility on the boat as we do, uh, maybe minus the fact that we know the boat and we've prepared the boat without them. So uh, like you wouldn't know exactly how the boat looks and how our systems have been maintained, but we know that um, they're good to go. Um, yeah, it's really, yeah, you're going to do the exact same things we do. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so I didn't think of it that way. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Brian, what are you doing? Well, the thing was, is I pushed something and now 
we've had a lot of comments and now I've lost so we're slowly making our way down the list but you guys are writing so many comments so fast which is amazing I can't we get love to all that. these and now I've lost my place and so I'm trying to hello from Ibiza. I'm trying to find yes, and from goals. Canada yeah, you guys talk amongst yourselves. I'll get us back on. Hello, on hello, Steven. Steven says, uh, crew is good. If someone is seasick, here, Ryan, I'll, uh, how about I do this? <laughs> crew is good if someone is seasick. It is uh, true. Sometimes your crew gets seasick, which you also have to be prepared for when you take on crew. That uh, it can be that you bring on people that at some point during the passage become incapacitated themselves. And so I think that for us with Ryan, it was a really good thing that we started our long passages, just the two of us, because we know that we don't need to rely on crew. We are self-sufficient, but crew is a very welcome uh, help. So uh, hopefully I will not be seasick. Hopefully you will not be seasick and uh, we can have a fun passage. Here's a question. What kind of entertainment are we taking along? Any fun books? Oh, okay. <laughs> we did load up on some fun books. No. <laughs> Annette is our entertainment. No, we uh, started today downloading a whole bunch of podcasts yes. and audiobooks. Uh, we have uh, a brand new stereo, which... Uh, we have a lot of downloaded songs. And this time, this time I actually downloaded music. If uh, you haven't followed us during our last Atlantic Crossing, I only had two playlists. One was Country Icons and the second was Rock Around the Clock. And I essentially had the choice between Dolly Parton and Elvis Presley. And by all means, I love Dolly Parton and Elvis Presley, but that's, that's all I had. And after 17 days, it's, uh, it gets old. It gets really old. Okay, Ryan. Here, Scott. Did you consider two additional crew or was the plan always three? So we have considered four, but it would really depend on the people. So uh, I th three is really an ideal configuration for three us. Three total, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can see why now that you're on board. Yeah, it is four gets really, really tight. It is really yeah. a small boat. So uh, Annette is uh, sleeping in the Vibers and you can sleep in the Vibers being two people but I think that for a passage of 20, 25 days, mm -hmm. it is so small. Yeah, yeah, yeah and so. crew brings a bunch of clothes and yeah, yeah. it's just more stuff to get around. So yes. but that would help make the bow heavier, which would help the overall situation on this boat. I think definitely my luggage. We may, is <laughs> we may take this. Are big, helping. We may take this big battery. And I am. I am looking. I am looking at the pontoon behind mm -hmm. us, which is like really tilted. I'm like, oh man, we're to be really fair, back heavy. Yeah, we are really back heavy. Oh, well. All right. This is a good one, I thought. Uh, Sophie. Yes. Okay. Are you going to be blogging every day of your passage like you did the last Atlantic Crossing? Oh, thanks for that question, Rachel. Yes. And this time around, we have leveled it up. So I will be blogging every day. You can go right now, I mean, or after the chat, doesn't matter, on uh, ryanandsophie.com. And you will find that there is uh, an offshore blog. And on our offshore blog, you can find our tracker. And normally those little updates would only come on the Iridium Go and it's a little tricky to read. So this time we have uh, a couple of friends of ours that are taking those updates, transforming them into an actual blog post with a photo and our live position when that um, blog update was made. And they're gonna spread those blog updates every day on Facebook and Instagram uh, so that we, we stay connected with uh, the community when we're away and you can read our um, our offshore blog. Hopefully it's good. But yeah, I uh, completely intend on continuing to do that. And this time I'm hoping to bring some photos with those updates. So. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right, you can take over now. If you want, oh, okay. since I've been getting uh, told I'm not doing a good job. But that's not very nice, <laughs> Ryan. Like had, when did you expect me to, uh, to look for? <laughs> Are you just giving up on moderating? Yeah, because you wanted to take control. Don't forget the chocolate. So we got a For lot sure. of chocolate, but we made a tiny, tiny That's bit. Nice. <laughs> a tiny bit of a mistake earlier with oh the chocolate. My God. What happened? <laughs> well, and it, please. We, okay, well, we were really hungry and we got back <laughs> after provisioning and we had lunch and then we had coffee and we forgot. All the chocolate in the all sun. All the chocolate in the co It wasn't in the sun, but it was it's in the cockpit. Melted. It was, yeah, 
most of it. Yes. Yeah, so um, so we're hoping for the best. We're making we made a little bit of a boo boo. Uh, well, uh, within that the, is a rookie mistake. Within the first yeah. seven days of our passage, the temperatures will dramatically decrease, so yeah. the chocolate should not be a problem anymore. But uh, in the meantime, it will have a funky shape. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully, still tasty. Mm, that's okay. a good question. Okay, so we were shopping today and Sophie was checking labels for cheese ingredients. So I no, <laughs> I don't think so. I love cheese, but we are going to skip on it that this time. But did you get any cheese in case we have taco night? No. <clears throat> I get I get no dairy today because I wanted to make sure that we have enough space in the fridge before okay. I get that. Got it. So we're gonna <laughs> taco night would be okay without it, no? Is this, this have is cheese allowed for taco night? It's yeah, okay. Yeah. The one okay. type yeah. of we have uh, so I established a rule on board called the seal, which is that stinky cheese is banned, but mozzarella or taco cheese does not count as stinky mm. cheese. So that's okay. So we can what have about pizza feta cheese? Uh, that is also okay. But uh, as long as it doesn't touch my food. <laughs> we can have a feta salad. But Sophie can have none of that. <laughs> Okay. All right. Noted. Brian, how is the water maker holding out? So that is a great question because on our last crossing, we didn't have the water maker. Yeah. Water maker's holding out well. We've run it a couple times while in the sailing around the harbor here. Uh, although yesterday I went to turn it on and I forgot one of the inlets was shut and uh, blew the tube out of the back. Luckily, I didn't break anything. Uh, although we'll test it a few more times. So it's holding out well, and hopefully for this passage, it works, because otherwise we're going to be conserving a lot of water. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I'm very excited to try that no cheese lasagna. The no cheese lasagna? Yeah, so excited. Uh, it yeah. is pretty. It is pretty it is, I'm ready. It is, it is good. Brian, you're kind of uh, scooting out of the field, you know, like we're losing you here. Okay. Sure exciting this, I think this is a very interesting question. So what are you bringing or doing for this passage that you realized you needed from the last passage? Uh, that would be our energy needs. I think that that was our biggest struggle. Uh, it was that we didn't have we didn't have enough uh, capacity or power generation. Our solar panels. You mean for were, like not for food, but like for physical power. I'm yeah, sure. like yeah. electricity. I thought it was I mean, going to be a different Dolly Parton and Elvis Presley album. Well, yes. one big thing that Essentials. you see right now yes. is that we're bringing crew. So there's instead of two, it's but you three. didn't need it. It was just nice no. to have. It's exactly. It, yeah. It's nice, but I don't know. I'm borderline if it's needed or not. Mm -hmm. It it is. It's not needed if everything's going well. If things Fair aren't enough. going well, yeah. it's nice to have the third. Yeah, that's my opinion. It that's is opinion. crew. Crew is nice to have, but uh, it should not be necessary yeah. at this point. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Entertainment. I completely failed on entertainment. Another thing that I brought this time that I didn't have the last time and I missed is a big cooking book. So mm. now I have a couple of uh, cookbooks and when I need inspiration, I, just, I can just go browse the cookbooks. I didn't have that and I ended up texting like Iridium satellite, emailing my brother, please, can you Google some bread recipes for me? Uh, and he did, he was a good sport about it. So that was good. Okay, and talking about my brother, will your brother send some videos when you are offshore? Uh, no, because we have no way to uh, make videos, but we have somebody uh, taking over our Instagram account and our Facebook account while we are away. And uh, we told her to uh, not hesitate to uh, mirror our natural goofiness. So there we go. <laughs> Oh, hi, Jules. Hi, Tenny. Uh, let's see. We had a question. Oh, no. It's just too many. They go too fast. <laughs> I don't uh, know. I don't know where okay. to. Okay. Hold this on. One. I had a specific. There you go. What? This one? one? Yeah. yeah but I, okay. You guys right. take that while I find my connection. How prepared are you for the worst case scenario if any comes to pass? So uh, we actually made a video about it about what are the worst things that could happen during our passage and how we do to mitigate them and what we would do if those things happen. And that goes from uh, water maker breaking, which to us is not a deal. We are uh, planning on not counting on our water maker. Hopefully we'll run it enough that every day we can just reset the clock and keep them as full as possible. 
But if our water maker was to break, we would not consider that a thing to having somebody dying, which uh, now and then happens, hopefully on this passage. Not on our boat. It's not like now and then on our boat, people. Yeah. But like generally. The, yeah. Thank you for uh, the... <laughs> Because now yes. and then on the polar seal, ah, people, die, people and... die. No, it's really not funny. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Annette. Oh my God, uh, my mom <laughs> oh my God. No, nobody will die on this passage, <laughs> but it is a talk that we have. So what would we do if somebody died? It's a really morbid talk, but I think that um, like you need to think about those things. Uh oh, I think we've. Uh, oh no, it. are we? Oh, no, there, we go. there we go. There we go. All right. You know, Caribbean internet, guys. It's always a little bit scary. All right, so we've had a couple questions about our sales. This is from Heidi and Franny, but uh, oh, we have one question if we, so we actually have new sales coming from Precision Sales, uh, a new head sale and a new uh, asymmetric spinnaker. They, uh, unfortunately, we were trying, when we approached them, we knew we were very tight on time to get sales made. And those guys really tried, they tried very everything. very hard to get our sales done in time but we had some uh small modifications we wanted made to things so they are going to be done when we leave they just won't be able to get to us so that's a bit of a pity um, but everyone's trying the best they can so those sales will meet up eventually with us uh what we are doing is we are not flying uh the wing on wing head head sail configuration like we did across the atlantic Two reasons for that one first off i thought that that configuration was really limiting for us as a boat and we won't be sailing in the trade winds now we're going to be on all points of sail and that setup is not good so in fact we're going to be taking down in the next couple of days our big genoa um and our 140 percent and we're going to be putting up just a smaller jib uh, for sailing upwind because with that large sail, the boat gets overpowered and really starts healing. Yep. So we don't want that. <laughs> so we're going to use a little bit smaller sail. It's a little bit older, but for us, uh, hopefully that works well. Uh, and if not, we have the other sail. Uh, and then we have our old, old asymmetric, which we should probably hoist to make sure it actually opens up and works. Uh, Cause I don't think it's been up since we dropped it in the Atlantic a year and a half ago. And um, so yeah, that's our that's our setup. I imagine we're gonna do more reaching and more beating into the wind on this trip than we will actually do be doing downwind sailing. So yeah, that's, that's my guess. Probably what's gonna happen. Another sail that we have that I, I hope we're not gonna use, but uh, it turned out to come in very handy is our storm jib. Uh, it's funny, we just tried that sail for the sake of it, and in 25 knots of wind with just a storm jib and two reefs in the main, we were pulling six knots. And the boat was behaving really nicely that, um, well, the sea was flat, so that was nice. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't expect to be able to pull any speed with uh, the storm jib, so that was, uh, that was a good surprise. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping we never have to use it. Uh, Todd. Hi, Todd. <laughs> are we going to buddy boat with Sailing Too Short? Sailing Too Short is another YouTube channel. They are currently in a mooring field. We're not going to buddy boat with them because they are staying in Bonaire. At least that's what I that's what I think their plan is. And uh, we're leaving. So yeah, we'll probably see them again down the road. But uh, we're only buddy boating while we're here in Bonaire. Yep. OK, so how do we manage internet connection offshore? <laughs> But we don't have Starlink yet on the boat, which is a bit of a pity. If anyone is connected with Starlink and wants some beta testers on the sea, I would volunteer. But no, uh, we use our Iridium Go. Uh, and so with that, it's very, very slow. It's like 800 kilobits. It's really bad. Like I think my old 14 core modem was way faster than this. But we can get weather data downloaded. We can get uh, plain text emails. We can get phone calls and SMS, uh, and we can even, if we got time in the night, send a photo or two, which is what we're going to try to do. So it takes a few hours, but we can do it. So that's our best tool. Works really well. Uh, but that's the only tool we really have that is affordable. <laughs> I think that's the key word, affordable, and uh, uh, will work with the equipment we have on the boat. Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, Andrew. Uh, I think that we're expecting this passage to be a little cold. So we've stocked up on socks, uh, woolly underwear, boots, gloves, hats, uh, rather than Bermuda shorts. But uh, thank you for the wonderful question. Okay, Anna, what food have you uh, have you got for such a long passage? So it's a fun question because we actually start we we provisioned today. We started the provisioning. I call this round one. And so what we do. What was the plan in it? How would you describe the way well, that we provision? You described the plan earlier as go to every aisle and get everything you want <laughs> and get four of everything you want, at least. Oh, here he that comes. That was the plan. Here he comes. Oh. Uh, he's not naked, though. Um, OK, well, thanks. Oh, no, I spoke too fast. Uh, OK, so Dave, there is such a thing as uh, YouTube community guidelines. And uh, we can get quite penalized. Hi, this is our, this is our neighbor, Dave. Hello. Dave is on a brand new Moody 45 Dexelon, which looks absolutely it's beautiful. gorgeous. As beautiful as Dave himself, <laughs> I shall say. Oh, yeah, um, I'm blushing. <laughs> Dave, didn't you, didn't you say that you were going to come with a big cleavage or something uh, <laughs> sexy? Cleavage. Yes. A plumber's cleavage. Ah, Plumber, oh, plumber's cleavage. Now I understand. <laughs> I was not in on that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, following up with Anna. Do we carry bottled yeah. water in case we do? We carry a fairly good amount of bottled water, which is important on this passage because the boat is healing to the port in the back. So maybe we can shove them in places as ballast. Yep. Oh, this is an interesting question. Do we have any drogue for rough weather? We have a sea anchor. Uh, we've never used it, so I would be very, very hesitant to deploy it in rough weather because we've never used it. So I would either, I, instead of, we don't have a like a Jordan series drogue, which would be probably the only type of drogue I would deploy. So, uh, and we don't have one of those because they're expensive and we don't have the space nor the fittings for it. So that's a big job. But if we were going somewhere else, like more rough areas, we would have one. So yes. we would either heave to or um, run, go on a run. That's what I do. Yep. Sophie, have you stowed extra grog? It was a big hit on your previous passage. There's no grog. Thank this you, John. No yes, there is a tradition. When we go when we go halfway, we have a little bit of grog. It's tradition in Polish Seal. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Grog. It's very important that you know what it is. Um, grog is an alcohol. It's a liquor made in uh, Cape Verde. And to get some grog, you have to go really far. It's Cape Verde is not a place where a lot of tourists go, which is a pity because it's uh, it's, it's cool. beautiful. It's an amazing place, completely underrated. If you like traveling a little bit off the beaten track, this would be a wonderful place. And so you have to go to Cape Verde, that remote place. Go on a little tour that we that will take you to a, a distillery where you can purchase the grog. Uh, and the grog itself, how does it taste, you will ask? Well, it, it was, um, it's not what's interesting about it. What's interesting about the grog is how far you need to go to get it. Okay. But there we go. But, uh, but it's, it's a tradition on the Holy Seal that we, uh, we have a little bit of grog um, halfway through passage and we celebrate with it when we arrive. It's wonderful. Okay. Steve asks, have you ever considered using a sail kite? I think what he's asking, I think, is um, like a, a Winokur or a, what is the other name brand of that? It's uh, one of these big kites that have a, a wing inside of it. I looked into it a while ago. I think it would be really cool, but they are extremely expensive sails, uh, upwards of $10,000 for a boat like this. So I've spent too much on Polar Seal so far so probably not but i would love to try one sometime to see how it works because i think it would be a lot better than our twin head sail setup that we did yeah uh jules grug <laughs> did somebody call my name <laughs> so jules and tenny were actually with us when we went to cape verde and purchased the grog and they can attest to uh, the deliciousness of the beverage uh, parasailer yes 
Sorry, some people said parasailing. That's the other one. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. This is a very interesting question if we're using a weather router. Ryan, what is a weather router? So uh, a lot of us get like the grip files or uh, pa use passage weather, predict wind or windy while we're underway. And that's great, but that's just raw data really for a lot of us. And most of us don't have years of like meteorology experience. So sometimes on these longer passage, people will employ the help of a weather router. And this is a person whose job is to look at the forecast, both short term and long term, and and decide, okay, what is the general weather patterns and where should you start pointing your boat to take advantage of those? So um, we are going to employ the use of those. Uh, we are gonna be working with, somebody asked about this earlier, uh, Andy Shell, 59 North, uh, who's a friend of ours and we are involved in their business a bit, but they have a new service called Mission Control. Uh, and if uh, and they help with everything. So if you're buying a boat, they can help you buy a boat and try to find the right boat for you. And then they can help you equip that boat. And then when you take that boat off shore, uh, they can provide shore support and weather routing. And then they work with a company called WRI, uh, who does a lot of boat passage planning. Uh, so we are going to be working with them on this. This will be kind of their first long one that they'll do. And we're excited to try that out. We're going to have our call with Andy tomorrow and talk about, you know, departure date. And we're going to document that for you guys to yep. see how it goes. So we're right. excited for it. When uh, we crossed the Atlantic the first time, we made a little video about how the Atlantic is crossed from uh, east to west. And we're going to do the same time, but the other way around. And the other way around, I think, is much more interesting because it's uh, it's pretty technical. And there really are three segments in this passage that we're making. There is us going from Bonaire to the north of the Caribbean Sea, which is going to be one interesting segment. Hey. Things are going things are going to change when we go from the north north of Caribbean Sea to south of Bermuda, and it's going to change again when we go from south of Bermuda to the Azores. So uh, yeah, we're. Um, I think that weather routing this time is going to be uh, a very, very good to have. And I think Annette uh, Willem, your husband, is going to be a little extra shore support for us too. It's it's always nice to have somebody on land that kind of knows what you're up to uh, and can do a little Googling if you have an issue or something or give you some advice. Uh, that's somebody that, that is a little disconnected from the situation, but can provide support. So I think that's it's a really important thing. To for, have. for example, please, can you send me a bread recipe? <laughs> Just as important as anything. Or can you contact a marina or can you contact the Coast Guard to see about the requirements? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to have. Hopefully this time we, we will not need bread recipes. Yeah. Okay. Do we have an AIS system? We do have AIS, both transponder and receiver, though when we go so far away offshore, uh, we don't use it as much as we use our radar. Our radar really is the system that we use the most because we're not going to have a lot of traffic around us, but we're probably going to have squalls and we want to monitor them. And that is something that we do with our radar. So, yeah. Okay. Sea Prince says we need more weight in the bow. I we mean, definitely need more weight. In we the still bow. have to go back and get We the have bought no radar. liquids yet. So, we will definitely be putting like just bottles of water up in the bow it's uh this is ridiculous how we are right now although i will say before we left cape verde we were actually more loaded than this so mm -hmm. oh 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 there is anxiety in this question if i have started our pre-passage cooking no i have not and i'm uh, i'm actually a little bit stressed about it because uh, it was on my to-do list since Sunday and a lot of uh, little unexpected une unexpected things happened to us this week. Uh, we had, Ryan made a little bit of a boo-boo and started the water maker with the water inlet closed. So we blew up a hose that needed to be replaced that took us the whole morning. And we have a whole bunch of like small little things happening that pushed our um, schedule and so there's a lot of things that we were planning on doing that we were not able to do so for example guys I think that I can officially say that I will not be able to put any type of video out uh, before we arrive on the other side of this passage uh, <laughs> there is no way that I'm going to be able to edit anything 
And I feel a little bit bad about that. Um, but the priority is the passage and uh, our safety and our comfort during the passage. Meal prep is uh, definitely one factor in there. And I think that uh, we are going to start cooking tomorrow. Are you okay being my sous chef tomorrow? Oh, yeah. I'm a good sous chef. The amazing. Well, then uh, meal prep starts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what happens when I push the flashlight on the floor here. What are you doing? Watch. <laughs> yes, it, we're we're very we're very Just rolls back bottom heavy. Ah, this is cool. Are you guys in the Harbor Village Marina right now? When do you leave the marina, and when will you return to Bonaire? Do you fall in love with our island? Yay! Oh, it's Adnan. Yes, Adnan was. Uh... Was, uh, oh, is it Adnan? Oh, yeah. hi, Adnan. Adnan, we are so sad that we didn't manage to meet you before leaving. Uh, we really are. You should talk a little bit about Adnan. Yeah, Adnan's been uh, kind of an advocate for the island. And I approached Adnan a few months ago about an issue that some of the cruisers were having. And he did a pretty amazing job trying to get some community members together to advocate on behalf of the sailboats here. And it was super awesome. So yes, we've definitely fallen in love with Bonaire. It's such, it's such a laid back island. It's a small island. It's still really authentic. It has a lot to offer and give. The people are great. And yeah, we definitely want to come back on our, on our return trip right away. So, uh, and Anand, you were a, a good part of that as we were trying to get to know the island and make it better for future people. So that was super cool. Yeah, we love Bonaire. So if all of you watching have an opportunity sometime, consider making a trip down here. It's yes. a sweet place. One thing I love about Bonaire is driving on the island. It's so laid back. It's like there's no stoplights on this island. There's a couple stop signs, maybe. It's kind of optional. But everybody there's, kind of drives slow. You just kind of drive. Like, yeah. And then for parking, you just it's spot you just kind of park there except the airport which is crazy because there's like no parking rules anywhere except the airport you have to pay they like box you in this little thing so they make sure you pay it's an it's, airport it's so it's so crazy <laughs> you can't get away from it but no oh, i love i love this place it's so laid back okay this is a question for you and it's because you brought all of this well you you have the clean ocean set um which has everything from sunscreen to um shampoos, soaps, and dish, dish detergent, and, and soap format, and the laundry detergent, the laundry and the strip detergent. format. Yeah. And um, we are going to be launching a cruiser's set of that, which that means that three and six months supply to start. And well, I managed to fit a three month supply in there for Ryan and Sophie. So we have a really, really big dish block on board now. Can you, can, can you, can you go get the know. dish block? I don't, I don't you don't know where it is? Oh, that's it's a mess down there. It's, it's we like have a half a, a kilo block of yeah, soap no, uh, a big, big one. to do the dishes. So I just I brought some supplies since they're going to be away for a while. I so just want it'll to point hold out, you over for a little one bit. One of our short support yes. is the Googling champion. So <laughs> this is Willem, everybody. This is Willem, who is uh, Annette's husband. Mm. And uh, Willem will be our short support. Uh, William asked today, when are we going to have our call to talk about the first report? William, it's probably not going to be today. I am sorry to say. If you saw, if you saw the boat right now, yes, at the end of this live, we're going to try to take the computer and show you how the, the cabin looks at the moment. It is um, interesting. It looks like a boat about to go on a big pass. It looks like Hiroshima. Just... Except it's like this. Yeah. It's like a speedboat, but not really with speed. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like it. We're gonna we're gonna trick all of our enemies into thinking we're going fast. All right, here's a good question. Where what's your last Bon Air meal you guys are gonna have before you leave? Uh, are you gonna go to a restaurant pizza? Oh, oh we froze. Oh, we froze. But I think it's just uh, it's just Crow oh, that froze. There right. we go. We're back. I think. Well, this is just my thing. One of the, my last going out meals, I would like to go to the brewery because that was the first place we went while we we're here, and it's so freaking good yeah i would love to go there yeah we're probably gonna go to the and brewery and leave a sticker is la that cantina. your choice too yeah nice. la cantina it's uh it's really good if you okay. ever come here we just need place. let's let's just oh, oh my that's god awesome. that's really cool okay and then i have to say not because i didn't choose my name but i kind of love it it's uh it works everywhere internationally sophie's a great name 
very good choice. Congratulations on your baby. Sure. It's amazing. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, Evan. Evan. Evan, send us an email with your uh, with your address and, and stuff, please, after this. Yes, 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 yes. Send us a little email. Uh, okay, Ryan, how is the Siliquan anti falling performing? Uh, actually, I made a, mis a bit of a mistake today. I really wanted to take the boat out and rev it up and get the speed up to try to get some of the crap off. Uh, I think generally it's it's good. The propeller is gross with stuff right now, and the ladder was when I brought it up today, but the bottom is still pretty healthy uh, and clean. I'm going to dive under the boat probably tomorrow or Thursday and do a big haul cleaning before we go just to keep make sure our speeds are good um but yeah it's i think it's doing pretty well we'll find out when we get to the azores and spend some time there I, we'll, we'll have a look and see but yeah <laughs> it's okay i think i know the answer to this question <laughs> it's, 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 it's not even it's not even a question okay okay alan first off uh you're right you know that's uh, just the way it is like let's yeah. be real about it I woke up this morning and I was like, my God, we have so much to do. And I put a lot of pressure on myself to uh, make mm -hmm. those videos happen, to uh, communicate with uh, with you, with our patrons. And uh, I don't always meet my own standards. Uh, and on the other, on the flip side of it, I know that it's not the priority. The priority is the safety of the boat and it's our comfort during passage. And this is what I need to focus on now. So. Uh, so yesterday I started having actual departure anxiety, but uh, but it's okay, you know, it's um, it's part of what we do. It happens. We just need to accept that it's there and focus on what's important. And I think that we're doing an okay job of that. I think yes, yes, definitely. I, I had a little bit of that yesterday too, and I'm sure I'll have more. But yeah, I think the fact that it's not my boat this time yeah is a really really big difference from yeah. when we did our passage on our boat. It and we had two crew on and that gave me a lot of anxiety as well. I always find when it's not your boat, like the, it's, it's a easier. totally different it's, experience. Yeah. You're yeah. there, you do, you're like, okay, how can I help? Yeah. And then you just do, you just do that. It's very different. But and, I, I'd say like but, at the same time, yeah. not that I don't trust you because I do, we, we've done a lot of miles to just the two of us, but having an extra person on board helps relax me a little bit as well. And maybe, you know, like almost like having a whole, like if we were to have five or six people with the space to do that, would probably continually to relax me because we know that we have the hands if stuff goes wrong because when it's just the two of us it can be really stressful because there's just there's just no extra help it's a it's a lot to deal with it's a it's a lot to deal with but um i would say you know even though we believe we know ourselves that we have the tools to deal with all the situations we have talked about everything everything is on track we are so ready for this um but it's hard to convince your own anxiety that you're good that you're probably more prepared than a lot of people doing doing that passage um and i think i think uh, we'll talk about this more like the next season of videos but we've done a lot to like a talk about and address anxiety while sailing lately, especially me. And just that fact that now Sophie and I are much more open with each other about how we're feeling in the morning. So like the last few days, I think every day I woke <laughs> like, up and I'm like, Oh, I have anxiety. I have, yeah, me too. Yeah. I have a lot of anxiety this morning. We just like, we'll mention it and talk about it a little bit. And we just understand that that's where we are and we just yeah. go about our day. But, uh, I think it's also helpful this, I feel like this trip, when we leave, when we left Cape Verde, we literally like left into the ocean. There was no, like a day out, there's no turning back. There was no, yeah. we, it was just like 2,600 miles ahead of us. There, and, because once you get a day or so out, going back is really, really hard to do. Yeah. Um, and I feel, I feel a little more calm with this because there's a few bailout options until we get to a certain point. So we can like start going along and getting into a rhythm and you know if something gets bad we still have a few options we have contingency uh, plans whereas yes. and you know eventually we'll get to a point where that goes away if you will but that the distance that total distance between like bermuda and uh azores is actually it's like 1700 miles i think whereas cape verde to here is about 2100 so it's you know it's like 400 miles shorter actually if we were to stop so I don't know, mentally, it's just a little bit different for me. 
I think I think that it shows. I can definitely feel it. I think that in the last days leading up to our first Atlantic crossing, I felt a lot of stress coming from you. And this time it's it's normal stress because we're just running around like mad people, which is it's you know, like normal. it's not super nice. It sucks having your boat ripped apart just before. You I think that at this point, it's it's good that YouTube doesn't have smell o vision because I think <laughs> that we're all like. Yeah, ah. that's one nice thing about being in the marina because we can go use the nice showers oh, yeah. and just stand under them tonight. For like an hour. Tonight, the three of us oh, will be uh, showers. We, have, we haven't taken a long shower in a very long it's time. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be great. Okay, Linda. Yes, you will be able to track us on the passage. Go to ryanandsophie.com. Uh, click on where is Polar Seal, and there's going to be updates every day while we are away. And uh, Google Chrome froze again, so we're gonna wait. For two minutes until we are back. Hopefully, we're back. Oh, Yay, we're back. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Oh, hi, Louis. Yes, hi. it's going to be fun. We're excited to body boat as well. It's been a long time coming. Okay. Mine, this one is for you. <laughs> is the boat too small to live on for two? <laughs> um, I think it's okay. I don't think Sophie thinks it's okay some days no it's I'm, a small space i'm i'm starting to grow a little uh i would love to have a bigger boat, boat but i think once we get a bigger boat after a few years you're going to say the same thing so yeah it's like you you just end up filling up the space that you have yeah. available to you i think for us it's it's more of like how do we like there's physical space and then there's emotional yeah. space yeah. and it's how do you f like set those boundaries and sophie and i have had done a bad job at doing that and but we decided that we needed it you know like we need to give each other time on the boat by each, ourselves or have time away and it, whatever that looks like or means and that's been really hard in the yes. time of COVID because like there was nowhere to go. there's nowhere to go as I'm sure it was the same for all of you there was nowhere to go during COVID and it's uh it's difficult um I'm sure that it actually is to live with your partner 24 7 seven days a week uh 30 days a month annette we're gonna ask we're gonna ask you a question because you've been a bit quiet lately yeah we need to please ask a question, question ask right? more question to annette uh, i have a question for annette though um where is it <laughs> uh no i have a question i'm gonna ask her oh okay um, okay like that yeah what is one thing that you were expecting or you had a like a predisposition of when you before you got to the polar seal mm -hmm. that when you arrived you're like oh i didn't expect that or that's different than i imagined or something maybe it's too early but do you see what i'm asking yeah like, i see what you mean um i mean so far it's uh, <laughs> i will say i think the boat in, inside seems small like it is smaller than it looks on the videos yeah, yeah but yeah. i i was pretty sure that you were going to have that feeling <laughs> and i'm a, i feel a little bad about that um not that i i don't feel that i misrepresent yeah. our boat but i had a feeling that you would find the boat to be smaller than mm -hmm. what it looks like i hope that you will be okay i, I think so i mean i'm <laughs> i'm used to also being on a boat so it's yeah like by all mean close the door when you want privacy <laughs> close the door when you want to sleep i have um so annette sleeps in the vibers which is where i typically have all of my stuff i have my wardrobe i have my shoes i have my uh, hygiene products and cosmetics and so i try to move as much of what i use uh, into our room so that mm -hmm. i wouldn't have to run back and forth to your room with that being said, you know, when Larry asked me to go get those glasses, I don't think that me wearing those glasses was the funny part. You should have seen me climb on top of the fence of cushions that was blocking <laughs> that access. Was there? Wow. And I was crawling over the door to get to, to, get to those glasses. It's, it's Polar Seal is a small boat. Uh, okay, Ryan, did you have anything that you wanted to click? Are we going to do a full circuit of the Atlantic? Yes, we are. We're going to do a trip around. So actually, when we started this project, we were just going to sail for a year and do an Atlantic circuit. And this is the year we will do that Atlantic circuit, except we are the other going way the around. other way than we had originally planned. So yeah, uh, yeah if, if all goes well, 
Of course, this will be our second attempt in the last seven months to do an Atlantic crossing. Uh, if all goes well, we will have crossed. We'll have three Atlantic crossings under our belts by amazing. by January. Yeah, so that's exciting. Which is a good segue for Bill's question. Sophie, do you anticipate fixing the visa issue in the future? Yes, yes. So our visa issue is currently in the fixing, if I can say so. Uh, a few months ago, we hired an immigration attorney that is uh, helping us with our case. And uh, we are making good progress, but it will be taking a full year until I can come into the US and we will let you know in due time uh, what is going on. But uh, yes, essentially the reason why we are doing this uh, circuit is because we want to be in the United States next year. And hopefully- so we're trying to eat up some time now. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully that actually happens this time. Uh, all right, this is a good question, going back to the crossing. How much water do you use per day on average? I actually have sure. no idea. You don't know. We plan for a couple liters per person a day. Yeah. yeah. It's probably going to be that. And plus for the dishes. Like three or four liters. Of, yeah. Three yeah. or four liters per person per day. We're pretty conservative with the showers and the dishwashing. But it is nice to have a nice shower every, like a good proper shower every few days. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you guys buy any souvenirs or are the memories going to last you? I, it just feels like this is their this is a comment for you, Annette. No, I don't think so. Those but giant reusable told... shopping bag with Bonaire photos on it, the grocery store, oh cool. That's a souvenir. It is yeah. a great souvenir, but I think it's a great question. Great question we because a... yesterday we went by that store and Sophie was like, we are coming back There's here. It's a really cool. And what are you going to get? <laughs> flamingos. Yeah. yeah, it's a flamingo island. It's no, but cool. today it's when- It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Today, today when we went to the grocery store, um, I, um, forgot to bring our ice box. Oh, yes. And so I bought an extra well, this is supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> a surpri oh, yeah, no, sorry. It's, well. uh, it's still going to be a surprise. <laughs> well, I mean, haven't heard anything. OK, but yes, we uh, we do buy a few souvenirs. I have a wall of uh, magnets of all the places that we've been to. And I love that little magnet wall. It's so cool. Sorry, I need to answer one thing regarding a meeting tomorrow from somebody in Europe. Oh, so you're just going to write an email live no, on I'm just, YouTube? I'm just going to just... You are actually writing an email going, live on people YouTube. People are going to bed and we're... Yeah, okay. Ryan is working. This is this No, is no, YouTube this is live. for us. This is for us. Okay. Yeah. This is so that we can buy a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah. Ryan is currently working on trying to get us a bigger boat. <laughs> okay. Next, uh, let's take more questions. Um, size matters, Sophie. Yes, it does. I agree. Yeah. Size does matter. We all must agree. Uh, absolutely. Oh, this is a cool one. Did you get the new dinghy sorted? So, yes, we did. We're not completely there yet, but uh, but Ryan has run some tests. We got a new Takakat, an LX300 that is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is a rocket ship. That's great. And it works so well with our Torquedo because it creates less drag. And lately, Torquedo sent us a 10 horsepower electric dinghy, electric outboard that we use with a Dakota lithium 48 volt battery. Uh, and Ryan is uh, currently in the process of beefing up the setup. We found that it, we have a little bit of a cavitation issue with the prop that we are currently uh, trying to fix. And we are going to put the battery in the box and try to make a seat out of the battery rather than just have a battery sitting in the middle okay. of the dinghy. But uh, we have used the faster dinghy a couple of times and it's so quiet. It is it's incredible. So quiet. You will not hear the dinghy. We are stealth. We're flying down the water and you can't hear anything. And we go fast. It's amazing. Yeah. The speed difference is really, really cool. Super so cool. Um, we're really excited about that dinghy. And we think that we're going to use it in the Azores to go to some dive sites uh, because now we have we're gonna try a, little, it, yeah. a little longer range. With There's it. not as much uh, anchoring in the Azores, so we'll be in marinas yes. more, which is a bit of a pity because we just got this stuff, but we'll make it work. So there is oh, a, this hi. is, this is Ryan. <laughs> YouTube meet Ryan's mom. <laughs> that is, that is really cool. Uh, all right. 
Let's see. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So, oh, that's a cool question. What kind of boat do you own, Annette? Do you we want to talk about your boat? We are on a 37-foot catamaran. It's an island spirit, which is a South African-built boat. It's from 2001, I believe. And um, it's been in Willem's family since new, and we love it. Well, that's cool. I didn't know it was there since new. That's awesome. Yeah. Fun, fun. Okay. <laughs> Annette, do you want to comment to that? Is the boat messier than in the video? Yeah, probably, definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. One hundred percent. You mean the video? Well, because oh. on the videos, it's like one little square, you know, usually. Oh, it's super messy right now. It's crazy. There's always a way to just clean up one area. It's crazy messy. Yeah. It was somewhat clean when Annette arrived yesterday. But when, Annette, when Annette arrived, I told Ryan, Ryan, just put yourself between uh, the companion way and the galley. She said she didn't look in there. Um, and the rest was okay. The rest was okay. No, right now it's uh, right now it's an absolute pit. But the funny thing is, it's just I really don't mind because it's all things that I'm used to. So it, it I don't really like see like oh my gosh, it's so messy, you know. And no, it, right now, right now it is absolutely awful. Towards the end of this life, we're gonna take you down in the cabin so you can see how it looks right now. I, I think mean, that it's in itself it is interesting. Right now it's just tough to get around, but yes, it'll be. Yes. Okay, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? <laughs> I actually think I'm the one that hogs the Excuse bathroom. Excuse me. I was so. about to say. I'm like, is our bathroom time limited? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't. There's not a lot of like makeup putting on underway, but I saw. I still need my, you know, uh, <laughs> contemplating time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are not the. We are not the people that take all of the time in uh in the bathroom but maybe maybe chuck means ryan your bathroom time is going to be limited as in i can't spend so much contemplating time because we all know the best thinking is done we do not we used uh, to we used to but we took it out for i don't remember quite why. that's the inlet now for the water maker Right, that's a pretty... So we actually still have the foot pump, which uh, the reason I left it in place was so that if we had a electrical down situation where we don't have a pump, like a house pump, we could still at least get water out of the tanks into the, into the sink. So we could do it that way through that pump. So I was sinking a little and I left the pump, the foot pump in place. All right. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I have not changed my pants in like a week. Uh, yeah, no, you have not. So, uh, yeah. They, they told the, me that the, back the laundry is kept in my box. Well, I won't see much it, of mine because I just wear my clothes. No, 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 no. I have also told Ryan that Ryan is not allowed to make his clothes stink. Like no stinky can he clothes. Actually, is that possible? I don't know yeah. how a person has control over that. But you can you can uh, shower. Oh, that's one way. <laughs> okay. okay, and then you can uh, change your clothes regularly. You know, have enough supply that you don't need to uh, wear stinky clothes. Um, so I hope that Ryan has more than one pair of pants this time. I, I think he does. I think you do, right, honey? Okay. Uh, there we go. Changing topic. Uh, well, we go also in the Pacific. Yes, absolutely. We really want to go in the Pacific, but um, we just don't know when. It feel it felt like this year was not the right year for us to do that. I think that French Polynesia was closed for a very long time, and so it would not have been a good idea for us to attempt that. Um, so when COVID is not a problem anymore, when borders are open, we will go in the Pacific. And uh, who knows if it's going to be with Policeal, Policeal or Policeal number two? Who knows? Right, Ryan? How did that email go? How, how hopeful are you? <laughs> that, uh, it was an email, email for go? our passage planning tomorrow. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it had nothing to do with I thought, business. I thought that it was your business. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, well. One can always help. Okay. Uh, go, 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 bigger boats. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, this is such a good question. Yeah. Well, so I came with two bags. I checked two bags and um, one was mostly things for Polar Seal. I yes. will say I definitely, I'll, I'll be going with two bags for sure, but yes, um, there are a lot of things. It was fun. I think some of the gifts are right next to you. 
can show those. Oh, these oh are yes. Oh, these are so oh nice. my God, those are amazing. Okay, right, I go. I also I should guys if we go get all the gifts it's gonna take a lot of yeah. time. We can't do that. Right we now. can't we but can't do that. Here's one. This is really exciting. This is really cool, guys. Okay, so you pro if you've followed this channel for a while, you probably have heard us talk about those Kong tether line. They are the absolute best tether lines out there because they're so you have this little guy. Uh, that you click yourself with. It used to be a rapid release, but now it's more of a like regular self-locking self carabiner, uh, which currently is the new um, boat standard. Boat standard. Uh, so you attach it to your life jacket and you have two tethers that you can uh, move around. So when you want to tether yourself to another point in the boat, you use uh, the shorter one, disconnect yourself and attach yourself to the other points. Uh, those are really nice because the mouth is really wide and the tether is really nice. It's really, it's actually a lot harder to find good tether line than you would expect. And so, uh, these are great. Yeah. And so, Willem, your husband, went to Kong and was like, So we need the new tether lines. And Kong was like, All right, here are three tether lines for Polisil. So, uh, thank you so much, Kong. Those are, uh, we love those tether lines. Oh, they're, they're the best. They're super awesome. So, um, that was definitely an amazing gift. Another amazing gift that Annette uh, came with was uh, a big blanket from Marmara Import. Marmara Import is a, a company that is owned by a cruiser, if I'm not mistaken. She sails. She sails. In Narragansett Bay, right yes. by where we love to sail too. And uh, they have all those beautiful Turkish towels uh, that are really high quality. And lately she started making blankets and she sent us a huge blanket that is so beautiful and so cozy and so comfy. Um, it was amazing. Jill, if you watch this, thank you so much. This blanket, I, I love this blanket already. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Uh, Mary, thank you so much for the super chat. You didn't have to do this. This was very nice. Um, okay. Second second boat called polar whale i like that i like that idea but i don't think that we can ever get away from uh, from polar steel um so yeah okay this is the million dollar question actually this is the two million dollar question mm. because that is the price tag of the boat that we would love to buy which is let's face it probably never gonna happen <gasps> never say never whoa <sighs> wow I mean, guys, I, I hate to say that, but I will not be making $2 million out of YouTube. That is just not going to happen. So, Ryan, this is a question for you. Uh, I want to get a Explo Cat. I think that's what you said. That's yes. what I want. Although we were on a, we were on an exquisite group. He stayed where you stayed. Oh, we were on an exquisite sure. catamaran the other day and they look a bit funny from the outside, but it was a cool boat on the inside. I have to yeah. say, it was a pretty cool boat. Uh, I don't know if that takes the cake over the Explo Cat, no, because I really like that Explo Cat. <laughs> okay, so this question is from Jules. Jules, who is a crew, who came to crew between the Canary and Cape Verde with his wife, Tani. Uh, and so there were just the two of them for oh, way over a week uh, in that cabin. Mm. So uh, for two people, I can totally see that. For one, it's fine. Yeah. Um, well, I'll be cuddling my back, so I think that, that's fine. I will also most likely be sleeping not in yeah. there over the it's, passage. Which is totally fine. Um, yeah. the, the bow can be a bit bouncy yeah. when you're yeah. there, so I really understand that. Uh, all right. What do you have lined up for entertainment for the next few weeks? So mostly Annette. <laughs> That's why I'm here. The only reason. And this is our source of entertainment. Uh, no, but we have podcasts, audiobooks, uh, cooking, and I think that having a little more downtime uh, is also going to be quite nice. I think that I'm going to be spending some time cooking too. That's what I baking. enjoy doing. That should be fun. Baking. I'm excited to do that with you. I do a lot of baking when uh, I... when we're on passage. Uh, okay. What time is it, honey? It is. We've got a lot of work. It is five thirty, and we're probably gonna have to round up that live stream pretty soon because, uh, because of the state of the cabin that I mentioned already. Okay, Ryan, this is a question for you. 
Where's my question coming from? Oh, this one. I see. <laughs> uh, will I consider? Yes, absolutely. An Expo Cat 52. <laughs> I will consider. Uh, all right. <laughs> this is a question for you. Annette. Oh, that's that's where, a lot of questions. Where here. have you sailed? Mm -hmm. uh, when did you, when did you come to Bonaire and where's your home port? And That's have you ever happened. crewed on someone else's boat? I don't know if we ever no, asked you that. I have not crewed oh, on someone else's okay. boat. Um, I have sailed across the East Coast, or I guess along the East Coast yeah. of the US and to the Caribbean. The furthest south that we've gone was Antigua last, over last winter. And I came to Bonaire yesterday. <laughs> so, on an airplane. Uh, definitely you on an swim. airplane. Yeah. And my home port is Rhode Island at the moment. Originally, I am from Hungary. Yes. Yeah. So I actually have two non-English native speakers on the boat. Yeah. It's going to be a fun it's passage. Such a, <laughs> such a sacred place to be. <laughs> yeah. Here's another. Question. I would love to. So I told Ryan and Sophie today that it would be really cool that if I could just hang out and explore the Azores for a few days when we get there because I've never been. I'm very excited to see it. And they proceeded to tell me that if I can still bear to be with them, You're then I am welcome. welcome to. You're more than welcome. I guess that goes both ways, but the plan <laughs> is to, yes, yes, for a little bit. We have uh, we have to tell you, we've, we've told that to all of our crew and everybody that have, that's ever uh, come on board with us. If you feel that when you are, when we arrive, you need to go in an Airbnb rather than on the boat. Fair enough. We will never judge you for that. I like, think our, both I our crew are going across understand. the Atlantic. Both our sets got off the boat right when we arrived. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that, really? Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, yeah, I think you're right. I think that Jules and Danny, uh went to a hotel. But I I mean, you've been on the it boat. Yeah. You've been on the boat. You, you've yeah. been on the boat for 10 days. Like, all you want is no, a really long, hot shower. It's true. And we needed to rip the, in Cape Verde, we had to rip the boat apart anyway. So get fuel yes, like out, the so. fuel tank. We didn't sleep in our beds. We're like, no, it was definitely the right decision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, yeah. But hopefully wanna... we get to go do some exploring. Yeah. At least. Should we take one more and then, uh, oh, Danielle, thanks, Danielle. thank you for the super chat. Yay. I think my mom gave one. Too. Yes, thanks, your mom. mom. Your mom gave a super what chat. A nice lady. <laughs> That is funny. Uh, Should take one more. Yes. Okay. One last question. Uh, Sophie, have you figured out how to speak to Annette in French? For uh, no, but I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn. Wait, that's that. actually a good idea. We, we could try. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> but I don't think we need secret messages. I, I wouldn't mind brushing up on my French though. Don't because... girls just like communicate through? brainwave yeah, stuff just you looks. just know we just need to look yeah. at each other maybe uh, not even nails we don't want to go like normally when we do a uh, live we uh we stay on a long time we stay on good. for as long as uh, you guys are interested in chatting chatting with us but this time we need to uh actually we got a lot of stuff to do we need to cut the cord because uh well i'm gonna i'm gonna take you downstairs <laughs> you'll understand why let's do this Yes. Bye, guys. We're uh, we're doing this. Well, we're, well, what, we said one last question. We just answered one. Oh, okay. Let's see. Annette, could you help me with the, the bug net? The bug oh, yes. net. All right. So this this view line. should already give you a, a hint of how the situation actually is. Okay. okay. Da, da, da. Sorry, I know that uh, we are. Thank you. Okay. So, I think that Jules and Tenny will recognize this view. Okay, how do you, how are we doing here? Wait, oh my God, this is, this is logistically complicated and I almost fell. So yeah, uh, welcome aboard. This is, this is the state of the boat. Um, and we really need to take care of it. So we really can't stay uh we really can't stay too long but we'll take uh, we'll say a proper goodbye uh, before leaving you all oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. okay Whew. all right okay let's uh let's say let's say goodbye to everybody 
Bye, Jules. Bye, Bye Adriana. It Bye, was. Everyone. This it was, was a great live. We had over 500 people on this live at one point. This was super fun. Was great. And great. I don't know what do, what you guys thought about this uh, new format for uh, the live with the questions popping on the screen. I thought that it was really fun. So I may spend. I think at some point we're going to be able to have like people video in and ask questions. Well, I randomly clicked on this comment. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think I think it's going to be good. Uh, thank you, you thank you so much uh, Patricia it's uh, it's super nice we uh, we will see you on the other side uh, dear patrons if you don't hear much from us uh, on the platform it's normal we're gonna try to do a zoom call with uh, with our patron on Thursday I think we're gonna try we're gonna try we're gonna do our best no it's uh, it's been a little bit chaotic here on board before departure but it's uh that's that's how it is it always is a little bit chaotic so um so yeah thank you so very much for being with us tonight uh we will uh we will see you on the other side and if you want to follow us during our crossing you can do so on our website where there is a live tracker so uh, mwah, much love to you and Hi guys. Ooh, we will a, see you ooh. soon Bye, guys. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone.